Man, early in the year, temperatures in the 50s, um, water temps in the 50s, and uh, it is the perfect time. Fish are setting up, still out a little bit. They're not on the bank quite yet, and uh, you know we're going to go look for some of these fish on on forward facing sonar, and we're also you know, going to fish just staging areas. So it's a uh, could not pick a better water temp, a better time of year to go catch one on a stunner. So what we're doing, I mean, it's it's. It's not rocket science. I mean, we're fishing areas that, you know, fish are gonna stage in. And so what you've got is you got a channel swing bank here. And, you know, they spawn all back in this creek and, um, you know, we're just gonna fish down through here and, you know, the shatter pulling back in here, everything's kind of trying to pull back in the creeks because it's, it's springtime. This is what we're throwing today. So this is just the, the Berkeley Stunna. It's their regular diver. It's not their deep. We've got a deep on just in case we start seeing them a little bit deeper. But um, man, it's as basic as it can. It's just a straight shad color. I think everybody by now knows that Hank Cherry had a lot to do with it. And uh, you know, he's won, he's won a few tournaments on a jerk bait. He designed it so it slow sinks. You can get it, it's, it's funny, you gotta, you gotta get a little rhythm to it, but you can get it in a rhythm where it kinda just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And so, you know, when you are targeting fish on live scope, we can we can kind of control the depth. I'm almost bank fishing with forward facing sonar as a guide, right? As my as a you know, it's I'm trying to catch these fish that are staging up on this bank um, as much as anything. But I'd be a fool to not use the tool in front of me. See, there's one in that brush. There's the bait. It's getting, I'm getting it a little deeper. There's a fish in the top of that brush. I didn't want to play. Brush piles are a piece of structure. They're a piece of shade. They're a piece of ambush cover. And a lot of times, you know, in the mornings, you know, the, the fish don't need low light conditions, morning, um, wind, things like that. Fish don't need to have that protection of a brush pile. You know, I'm gonna chase fish more that are that are out cruising, that are out, you know, eating shad, that are, you know, kind of on the move because those conditions put fish on the move. There he is. Like one of those. There we go. We caught us one. Not a big one. Little spot of bass. Little spot of bass. He got him a mouthful of fusion hooks. But uh, he was one to eat. He, a little bigger than his uh, his appetite was good. But you know that fish never showed up. You know that's that's a fish you're just going down the bank like you used to. You know that's that's an old school. Stun a bite. I do not care what cadence you pull with for the most part, as long as you move that bait on slack line. You don't want ever want that line tight when you're moving the bait. It just does not give it the action that it needs. You know, when you pop your bait, I don't care if it's a one, two, but it, it has to be slack as that bait hits, as, 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 it, as it pulls tight with your pull. Because that's what gives that jerk bait what it needs. I've never seen a, a good jerk bait fisherman pull anything on tight line. There it is. I thought I saw some there. That's better. Oh, I just got him hooked funny. He's not very big. <laughs> Little guy. This time we got a little large mouth. Um, well, they are, you can tell how, I mean, they're just, they got little fat bellies on them. Just a little guy. There's a, we'll find mama soon. There's key attributes to why we use a stunna instead of another jerk bait. We've got the stunna 112, 
and the stunner 112 plus one and then we've got this one in the stunner shad we've got this one in the hanky panky um, probably the biggest key for me is the stunners allow me to get to the depth i need to whatever it is as you learn to throw this bait, you can kind of impart a little action and get it to kind of almost dive down and get it to, to the depth that you want. And if you twitch down, it's going to dive down a little bit. If you need it to come up a little bit, you just kind of pop it up a little bit. So, um, you know, the, some key features, you know, really, really windy. But the weight transfer system, it's got, it's got weights in it that allow you to cast these. You know, you can kind of hear it in there. And what that does is, you know, when you, when you go back and you you go to make a cast, it kind of shifts the weight forward and uh, you know back and then forward and kind of shoots it out there. So it really lets you make good casts, good accurate casts on a windy day. You know, most people think, well, I, you know, I want a suspending jerk bait because that's what we were told our whole life is, you know, in the spring, throw a suspending jerk bait so it sits in their face. But, you know, what a stunner does is it, it, it focuses on technology today, you know, which is, which is forward facing sonar, which is live scope. And, a lot of times you'll throw out there and those fish will be seven feet and your, and your stun only runs five feet. But if, but if you get a good cadence, you can kind of work it down to those fish and you can kind of put it in their face or you can work it up and, and get it in their face. You can really move a stunner through the water column better than any other jerkbait. Now one of the keys they don't, you don't hear a lot about jerkbait fishing. Everybody says use a short rod, use this, you know, and they all have their, their favorite rods. Man, it's all based on, on hip height. You know, I mean, everybody fishes a jerk bait from here. You know, you don't fish from here or your knees. And so, man, it just depends on, on your height here and, and where you are to the water's edge, because that's what matters, you know, and, and judge your rod size based on that. You know, if you can use a, you know, use the longest rod you can possible, because it helps you with longer casts. It helps you fight a fish when you're closer to a boat, but short enough that you can do this and not hit the tip, tip of the water all the time. You know, I can get away with a seven footer. You know, figure out the rod size, but, but, it, but it's all based on right here in the water. To me, your jerkbait setup needs to be one of your lightest setup. You know, it's something that, that I'm not afraid to spend a little money on, only because, man, it's, it's it's a technique that if you do it all day, it's gonna get it's gonna get on you. Xenon rod, you know, Abu Garcia makes a Xenon. It's their lightest. This is a seven foot medium, and then I've got the Xenon MGX reel, and it's it's the lightest combo that they make, um, and so it's it's what I use. It's a technique that I use throughout the year. You know, it's not just a, a springtime deal anymore. I'm using it throughout the year. So, you know, I want some, the most comfortable setup that I can get. And I'm gonna throw it on Berkeley 100% fluorocarbon 12 pound test. Um, there's times that you wanna get a little deeper, a little quicker, and you know, I'll go to 10. I don't ever go to eight. And if I wanna be up real high in the water column, I'll go to 15. As these fish transition in these steeper banks and, and even some flatter points where they come out where they've got a little drop, those fish are gonna transition on those places before they come back and spawn. And in my opinion, there is nothing better to do in the springtime than throw a jerk bait and try to intercept those fish. And there is no better bait than a Berkeley Stunner.